This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Oh, hey there, everyone. How's it going? Uh, I'm doing just good. You're doing just good. Mm. But uh, guess what, Jared? We have one other person that hopefully is doing good. It's Mel Kirk. Hey, guys. Good to be with hey, you. Hey, Mel. <laughs> yeah, it's been, a, it's been a spell. I was just like... Looking at our notes, I was like, oh my gosh, it's been a year. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, is it, how has it oh been a God. year already? Right? I was going to say it's been a minute, but I guess it's been a year. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a minute. That's for sure. Jeez. Uh, just a few things have uh, uh, happened in that past year. Uh, let's see, we had the Switch launch. We had Pinball M Drop. Uh, obviously, a whole mess of games that uh, you guys uh, released. And then the whole mess of games you guys just released. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there's there's a lot uh we've certainly been busy um all these things were put into production uh, a while ago it's good to see them uh coming out and uh release uh, a lot of stuff that we were sitting on for a long time we want to talk about and yeah it's it's definitely been busy i'm uh, very curious because i know a lot of people were wondering with pinball m um was that initially targeted to be for halloween and uh just missed the date by a few weeks yeah, honestly, we were targeting a Halloween launch. Uh, we've, uh, the, well, a lot of things have slowed down in the industry uh, this last year. Um, you know, uh, for example, we had some issues with, with licensing and whatnot. Other licensing teams lost team members, so they were slower to approve things. And just all that kind of stuff, you know, rolled uh, into delays. And luck, I, I thought it was going to be actually delayed a lot more than it was, but the teams did a lot of magic and got it out basically one month uh, past Halloween. The reception so far to Pinball M has been seemingly pretty good. I mean, like, there's a lot that people are loving about it. Um, we have been theorizing that this is kind of a test bed for things that might eventually find their way into uh, Pinball FX. Um, is that kind of the idea behind it, or is it just completely its own separate beast and you guys are just running with it? No, I think uh, your thoughts are definitely correct there. Um, you know, we, we saw with Pinball FX a certain kind of reception. And then when we were breaking ground on Pinball M, uh, it was actually towards uh, the end of early access of Pinball FX. And I just, you know, we, we kind of looked at it, each other and we just said, we need to do something uh, fresh and new and make Pinball feel uh, fresh again, because it feels like we're maybe doing the same things over and over. And so uh, I turned the team loose and just said, you know, uh, bring back a plan for new ideas and innovation. And they did that, and uh, they were able to execute that. And uh, it's great to see a good reception. Our user uh, scores are very high. Our press scores are, are very high. So it feels like we did something fresh and new, and, and this is a step in the direction to you know get people uh, playing pinball again. It's uh, Pinball M definitely is a very fresh and new experience. And uh, the thing that's really attracting me to that particular platform are the Pinball M unique modes. Uh, in it, there seems to be a lot of fresh ideas floating around with those modes, like the, you know, building up your score, um, you know, and then having it eaten down, um, you know, like a progressively more aggressive count. That's some really innovative gameplay. That's all thought about from the team. That was a team suggestion that, that that's how it worked. Yeah, it was. All those ideas came from uh, the group working on Pinball M. And these guys, some of them were working worked on Pinball FX, but others had been working on other projects at Zen. And then we just wanted to get some fresh ideas. And you know, sometimes when you're looking at things so closely and you're you're so close to it, you you don't you don't get the fresh ideas. So these guys definitely came up with with things. And then um, yeah, I would say that those uh, score modes and the kind of the the progression of each table and how you have different. Um, challenges and, and things that uh, basically a story that goes along with each one. Um, you know, those are all things that I think add a lot of value to each table that you're buying and playing, and it makes it more fun. I mean, I, I just think that the game is really fun. Um, and I think that yeah. we can work on those things uh, into FX because the KPIs are definitely uh, smiling at us with those, right? Yeah, absolutely. The KPIs are the key. <laughs> um, the, um, I'd imagine that, you know, like any experiment that the studio runs, there's a lot of tracking happening in that app and not bad tracking like you know, Google tracking, just like what ones, what modes are working the best, what ones seem to be played the most. And we, we had a similar discussion 
about this when Pinball FX came out, and there were some surprising um, statistics coming out about what modes were actually popular versus what the community was talking about. Um, I'm just wondering, at this early stage, I know it is very early, what seems to be a front runner in that game, if you can talk about that? Yeah, the play corners are very popular in the, all the customizations and uh, like your your profile customization. I mean, we went to new levels that we'd never tapped into before because we really wanted to bring the IP out as well and let players like have fun things to do with the IP and situate the, the pinball setup itself to be a space that felt very alive and rewarding. It seems like people really, really like that. They're spending time uh, on their player customization and they're doing the play corner updates. Um, also, just these these new modes, um, uh, the campaigns that go along with each table. It's clear uh, that was a good idea. People like to dig in and like be challenged with specific parts of the table, and um, and then the the daily challenges and the whole the way the whole thing is working together. We just we see uh, really really good results. I imagine hoping well... that uh, shiver mode takes off because I really want shiver that mode. in FX mm, to just be able to turn the lights. <laughs> It really looks amazing. Yeah, like the the lighting is, it feels like the team has learned a lot from using like onboarding into um, Unreal Engine four and then sort of taking that experience and putting that into Pimple M because it feels like from a a visual perspective, it just feels that little bit more mature than in, than FX. And I'm sure that again, this is like going all in trying new things, but it'll be really interesting to like like. Chris said Shiver looks amazing. Um, and, you know, with the capabilities of Unreal Engine 4, you've got this ability to really ramp up the visuals. We've already seen it with Pimble M, like with the HDR and ray tracing and all the NVIDIA reflex stuff, all the tech that's been put into M over the last couple of months as you've been coming more comfortable with the platform. That's, you know, really made a difference, I think, to how the game feels and sort of how it's perceived. So I'm seeing a lot of positive feedback about that just in the discord itself happening. So, yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. Uh, it was a long process. It took a lot longer than we thought. I think I've said this to you guys before, um, to get everybody up to speed with unreal. It's not a simple, just change over in new technology and, uh, everything works the way you expect. So learning curve was steep, but we've, got the experience now and i think that we're able to do the things that we originally envisioned the other thing that i noticed um that i'm really think that you finally came into your own on was that hd video display um mm -hmm. for chuck mm. and um uh, the thing it was just like oh that's exactly what you guys should be doing it's like now it looks like a modern stern or a Jersey yeah. jack i mean or a spooky i mean it's like dad this is what people are doing um so that's really uh exciting to see that and then how you're implementing that just other i mean I'm trying to think with uh any of the new star trek tables is there jared do you is there actually video in those or is it just graphics i can't even uh I'm trying to think there i think deep space nine has a little bit of vision in it and um the star trek table the like the og star trek table doesn't really have a great deal but it's the deep space nine table which i think as far as Yep. video assets and you can correct us if we're wrong here mel but it feels like that's the most deeply integrated with the show and even it sounds like original voice actors not that you can confirm that obviously but um it's like it sounds really on point so if they're sound alikes they're very very good sound alikes like it seems yeah like there are really there are clips uh throughout the star trek tables from each of the respective materials some of them are uh, modified in a way so that it might not look like the film and there's issues with talent and whatnot mm. being shown the hd video player is an awesome idea but in practice to get film clips uh, from film television uh, is very difficult actually uh, there's entirely different market uh, licensing teams from the, the games group that we have to go through we have to get some actor approval or uh, talent approval and then um, so, and then there's fees on top of that just to pull the clips that are pretty astronomical because you have a team that will go back into the archives and like cut very specific clips out. Um, you think that we might be able to just do our own cuts, you know, hey, we got the, we had a, you know, our spec that we just cut straight from a Blu-ray or something. And no, you, you can't do that. <laughs> it's all licensing is always hard. We know this, Mel, right? Like this, this is the, very difficult. I'd say it's on, on the level of music. 
Um, is oh, it, is well, it, okay. That's something. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, one of the things with me just like going, wait, is it there or not? Because literally so many tables just drop, like 14 tables in the span of a week, something like that. Um, I haven't had time to like really dive into any of them and then like, Mm. Really sink in and recall what what is happening in any of these. It's like, dang. Um, one of the things that I've been recently going through, though, Mel, was uh, going through our old podcast and our old interviews, um, and that includes our first interview with you. And it's interesting because one of the things that we asked you was, hey, if you guys secure one of these big licenses, does that mean that you'll be able to make other tables beyond just what you know the Williams Bally version is? And you were like, yeah, yeah, we should be able to do that. And I think the Star Trek one is the first time that A, it happened, and B, completely caught us off guard. We were like, whoa, hey, yeah. that's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we actually have a lot in the works with Paramount. Uh, we did the re-release of South Park. Yes. Um, let's see, so mm. there, and there's Star Trek, and I'd have to go down my list. Uh, they're, they're a fairly significant partner for us now. Uh, Twilight Zone mm -hmm. is with them as well. Um, yeah. Uh, there's others <laughs> I'd have to look at it. Um, but yeah, Star Trek um, took a long time to do. It's a <laughs> massive universe with a lot of people associated with it, a lot of decision makers. Um, and you know, some other delays. Uh, hopefully, I'm not frozen. Yep, there we go. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> No, you're um, right. Yeah, hopefully uh, no internet problems today. <laughs> so, uh, yes, but Star Trek, um, it, it's just one of those, it takes a long time. Uh, so we were, you know, and, and then we had Game Night Pinball come out and Charlie Brown. I would say that that whole December 7th day was supposed to look different, and some of these were supposed to release uh, earlier in the year. Hmm. It makes me wonder, so the, the one thing that we we have noticed this year, and I probably have my my uh, guesses as to why it's happened, but there's a, there has been definitely a slowdown in you know the, the Williams releases this year um, to an extent, and I'm just wondering if the this partnership and this sort of pattern we're seeing with like Star Trek Table and these licensed Williams properties and their tie-ins and the other tables, that the other ones that we see will actually have that sort of integration coming back again. Um, and we actually get to see a couple of extra table releases on top of the, the call Williams brand and the Williams license is, is that, can you actually talk to that? Is that sort of the plan with some of the delays or is it just because, you know, stuff needs to be shipped around license partners need to have their tables out when they have a due date, you know, there's, there's deals to be made and things that you got to do, I guess. Right. So, but can you speak more about that? It's a combination of things. Um, when we want to do a one-off third-party licensed Williams table with a big licensing partner, it's usually not enough to get a deal done. They want to see something bigger on the table. Mm. And so we present them with a bigger plan and more tables based on different IPs so that they will let us do the Williams third party. So that's, you know, that's... this. But how about doing new Star Trek games at the same time. And so uh, we have to, you know, we sign that deal, we commit to the dev timeline and yeah, that, so maybe that's why the Williams uh, non third party releases were slower this year. I think, I think we did some of the biggest ones this year. Um, Twilight, oh, yeah. Star Trek, um, uh, Ad, uh, let's see, was Adam's family this year? No, yeah, it was it Christmas. Was, no, it was Christmas last year. Yeah. Just okay. out of this year, but still a, a monumental release. And we know that Adam's family uh, is not an easy one to license. World, was World Cup? No. Cup. That was last year. No, that was last year. Also. I'm not sure. I have to look. Um, it, okay, Twilight Zone was this year. And we are getting into the pointy end of some of these Williams releases now. We are. There's not a lot of unlicensed themes left on, on the table, not really, the is there? Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, on the D and D stuff. I mean, sure, there's there's probably some elf no. you throw in, but you know, we're still dealing with like licenses either way you look, basically. So there's a few big ones that are um, that need to be done and will be done, 
There's also something that I'm really excited about, a, a Williams third-party license that will extend into um, original games as well, which I think is great, really big and really exciting. Yeah. Uh, mm. Let's talk about uh, one other thing that me and Jared both noticed, and that was with the uh, terraforming Mars table. That looks a mm. lot like Mars. And I'm wondering, yeah. can we technically call that a sequel to your Mars table? <laughs> Um, I, I, I wouldn't like, but I mean, I, I could see why, uh, that comparison or, you know, that statement could be made. Um, uh, but I think, uh, working with fire axis, uh, uh, you know, ideas that we latched onto. So it wasn't, you know, I don't think anyone sat down and said, uh, or maybe looked at it and said, is this too much like Mars? Is this considered a sequel or a spiritual successor? But, um, I, I, you know, I can definitely see the comparison. Okay. Um, mm. Let's switch gears entirely here. Uh, obviously, the other gigantic announcement uh, comes along with you guys partnering with At Games uh, into putting cabinets out in the, uh, in through the space there. Um, just wondering what you want to share. How did that whole thing come about? Um, what are you hoping for from it? What can we look forward to? Well, it was clear to me that the team at At Games is taking pinball very seriously. And so uh, I want to work with the best in class pinball partners in the world. Uh, felt like Arcade One Up didn't really care uh, about the pinball space. So uh, I want to. And some things out and found out we had a lot in common. And there we go. Um, the, with. Dealing with the cabinet there, um, obviously you guys were also already going into figuring out some uh, cabinet mode stuff on your own, having, you know, Aquash and Lena building their own cab. Um, was that kind of a process of also figuring out how that was going to work uh, within that environment or because they were doing it all off of a PC, I'm guessing it is a different space than using whatever the, uh, the card is. Jared, you know what the name of the card is that At Games is using. Yeah, their system on the chip solution rock that they chip. use. Yeah. yeah, the rock chip. Yeah. Uh, well, the process of building our own uh, unit was to one have fun with it, and for us to really understand what our community faces when they're building a unit and how we can better support them with features and, and just kind of getting really intimate with the space uh, because we we see it as a huge potential and. Um, we, we had a lot of, we had other companies knocking on our door who wanted to, uh, you know, be official licensed partners or just distribute content through their machines. And so we kind of just took a step back and, ex, you know, wanted to understand really what it, what it's all about for building, building a machine. None of us had built one. We just support the DIY crowd. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we learned a lot and, um, it opened our eyes to a lot of things about, um, you know, uh, the mentality, I think, of the DIY uh, group and in the, in the fan base, which is rabid and, and, and very, you know, into our game. Uh, but at the end of the day, like, we're a software company. Uh, I want to be working with the best-in-class hardware company and somehow marry us together so that it's an integrated solution and their strengths are clearly on dis display and ours are on display. And, you know, uh, I think that's coming together with that game. It's, it's very promising has obviously because of with ad games they're having their you know having the three screens having surround sound feedback as an option um those are all going to be obviously built into whatever you ship for ad games on their e-store or within the cabinet but then ad games has that whole otg mode where it's hey you already got all your zen games on your pc you can just plug in and go are the f are you guys making it so the feature sets for playing based off your PC and plugging into that going to work basically the same with integrating with their features? Um, or how is that? So th yeah, that's a good question. The games that we release on the at games eStore are natively supported with the hardware and we've done specific coding and hardware support. Uh, there's going to be the features that are built into their ecosystem. And I think right now the features are somewhat limited, but I, you know, their roadmap is robust and they're really developing a really cool, platform that will bring players together and uh, lots of leaderboard options and tournaments and online events. So we will definitely support those. And, you know, as they're not released yet, we'll patch in that functionality with any game that we release and 
just keep the whole, you know, every game will, will take advantage of whatever new feature the system offers. Uh, so it's going to be different. Like if you are still supporting OTG uh, and you are playing from your Steam game, you know, that's Pinball FX on Steam. That is different from the tables that are released natively mm -hmm. uh, for the App Games eStore. Because uh, I'm just wondering, like, I mean, obviously you guys are programming for uh, animated back glasses uh, or just even playing, having the back glass art for at games. And that's something that hasn't been available for Steam cabinet users. It's either they have to find their own back glass art, uh, find their own. Some people have been doing, creating animated back glasses. Um, is that something that Zen is just like, nope, DIY community can have it. We're not touching that. Um, or is that something that you guys are eventually going to take control over? to uh just for your uh your regular pin cab crew yeah so today we've just allowed community to drive that and to create or you know users can just put whatever they want in their their back glass with at games they're taking a more formalized approach so there's um, approved assets from our licensors that are you know uh, approved for that specific use in the in the monitors and in the screens uh, I, I think that we'll take a more proactive approach and and try to offer solutions to players um, for their own DIY cabs. There's uh, some companies out there, and one in particular um, that is, you know would like to be selling licensed, uh, officially licensed backglass images and kind of like he makes his video. And I'm, I'm trying to remember what the name of it. You guys probably know what it is. Um, he's in our Discord. Um, I think his name is Sean, um, who who runs this company. But I mean. Lots of opportunities to uh, to do more there. Mm -hmm. uh, whether people want to buy it or they just think it's something that should come with the table, you know, we'll we'll see. I kind of I'm of the opinion that we should uh, just supply nice assets to go on your virtual pin cab, uh, so you don't have to go like do a bunch of work, jump through a bunch of hoops, uh, or you know, buy it. But yeah. we'll see what people want to do. Also, just to make the license source happy as well, because I'm sure they'd be you know more comfortable with like something they've approved rather than you know something that someone's thrown together from Photoshop, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. I mean, licensors are still kind of trying to understand the virtual pinball space uh, and how it works in a cabinet. They're very familiar with the traditional business of Stern and Jersey Jack, but trying to understand uh, why would somebody buy a branded unit with an IP and then they can play other games on it that are different IP as well. What's a PlayStation? What's an Xbox? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, you, you get your God of Ragnarok PlayStation Five, and you're going to play hundreds of other games. It's like the same thing. So yeah, um, but yeah, we need to support it with correct assets for the game that is actually being played at the moment. Yeah, uh, looking forward to 2024. Um, let's get an update on a couple of things that we always throw out at you. Uh, first one being mobile app. Are we? anywhere is that something that we might see in the 2024 year or is that pushed beyond i think you'll see it in 2024 okay and uh our approach is uh i mean we learned a lot from the williams the game and I, I you know i'll just give you a short bit like it was kind mm -hmm. of complicated the way we monetized mm -hmm. i just want to make yeah. it simple you can buy tables or you can play with advertising um so i, I think right. that just keeping it simple will be very beneficial that's good. That seems to be the common model now with mobile. Yeah, like, yeah. It's either ad supported or you just buy it outright. Uh, yeah. Next one, VR. Mm. Uh, you guys were not looking at my email inbox before we started this. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I'm very hopeful uh, for a very uh, for something very big in VR uh, in 24. Okay. That's good news. Yes. I have a quest three waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to buy one until I see VR content. Um, yeah. <laughs> the um, moving forward with Zen for 2024. Uh, this last year, guy, what did we hit? Twenty? Did we? I know we hit the 22 tables. Did we hit even more? It's um, nearly. It's a big over 30 now, right? Like we're definitely over 30 tables now, right? I mean, with, with, I think Timbal M kind of pushed it over the the mark there. But I mean, it's like right there with the high 20s, low 30s. I mean, we did 11 in the last two weeks, right? That's, that's, so, yeah. Um, we definitely over the 30 mark for sure. <laughs> yeah. You had told us uh, in uh, last year that you guys were looking at, um, obviously, there was going to be a lot of Zen Originals, which drew to the forum. Yep, that definitely mm -hmm. happened. And then we were looking at... Uh, 
probably, I think you said, you know, five or six Williams a year. Uh, is that can we basically expect that same kind of cadence uh, for twenty twenty four? Was that a small yeah. cadence? What are we? <laughs> where are we at? We will not have as many uh, table releases in twenty four as we saw in twenty three. We need to focus on expanded distribution, which, uh, you know, we just mentioned VR and mobile. Mm -hmm. It's important that the games are available everywhere just for the, the health of revenue and the health of the company. Um, mm -hmm. That's it, very important. But there are, there's a number of releases. Um, there's, uh, you'll see, there's five, six Williams games. Um, uh, there's one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine plus six. You'll see fifteen, probably fifteen tables uh, next year. Okay. So fifteen tables plus new platforms. Yes. So that's a reasonable balancing act, I think. Like and you, you will see pinball M uh, tables as well, right? So you're going to see FX. You'll see pinball M, and then you'll see new platforms. You'll see tables. We're actually going to try to do something where we launch table and FX and M simultaneously, and you get both. They're like they're entitled. So if you buy it in one, you get it the other. Oh, okay. That'd be like, that'd be great. So I think that was like, one like, of the kind questions. Of like what, I was gonna say, like kind of like what uh, Wrath of Elder Gods, where it was the tamed mm -hmm. down version for FX and then the full tilt version for a Pinball M. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And the IP that we're working with for that is, is perfect. Um, and it, it's uh, you'll you'll see soon. I think we'll announce it early next year. Right. Um, it gave us a good opportunity to try this. Um, I don't know if you guys caught or not. There was an Xbox demo yes. uh, that it's live right now and. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know if uh, I should Texas, mention that or not. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fine. Uh, it, it's live, right? But like Texas Chainsaw Massacre is actually revealed there. Um, and and so but that is not the one that is going to M and uh, FX. That, that one wouldn't work. I was going to ask about that, actually. Yeah. It was it, something that I was hoping that I was going to get an opportunity to ask about. Mm -hmm. um, so that particular license is interesting because Spooky is doing it as well. So I, I, had, to, I had a look at Spooky's version of it they've done a, like a bit of a sizzle reel of some elements of the play field and it looks it looks rife for supporting in like pinball M as like a digital version of that table now i remember geez it would have been uh, at least a year ago when you had bug and co on one of the pinball um uh pinball bites uh shows and it was a bit of a surprise. It's like, oh, <laughs> why are we talking about Spooky <laughs> in, in um, Zen? So is this the sort of relationship that it was born of that original engagement with Spooky? That a license, the ability to collaborate on license and do a bit of that sort of heavy lifting um, and you know forge those paths with licensing and make that process easier for both studios to actually get hold of assets because they got Looney Tunes and um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is, they're both big licenses. Mm -hmm. So yeah, how, how's that work? Is that just purely coincidental or is there something more to that? So you would think that us talking together might have something to do or that we'd figure that out. Uh, we are very friendly and we have had lots of ideas, but coincidentally, this is nothing that we'd ever talked about. And somehow <laughs> we both we launched a demo and they revealed it on the same day. It's bizarre. yeah, it is so bizarre. Um, they're different versions of the same IP. Ours is uh, a different version. Uh, there's, just, I believe, after the original, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Right. And ours follows the events of the the Netflix film um, that was uh, released by Legendary Pictures. Oh, okay. um, right. Both right. dealing so with with the with the with the, uh, the estate, the Texas Ch Chainsaw Massacre estate is the licensor. But we had nothing to do. We had never talked about this. It's it's quite how um, freaky. Yeah, it's so so coincidental. <laughs> it's got me excited though. I thought, oh, are we going to see? Look, could this be the time when we actually see a digital and physical tie-in, like we've been wanting for ages? You know, like you know, talking about the whole, you know, physical manufacturers leaning on digital pinball to actually offer, you know, that digital experience and physical experience at the same time, like. Just uh, uh, it was getting me very excited, but obviously that's a that's not happening. It would be a lot of fun. We've gone down a lot of roads, had a lot of conversations, and of course, them being on pinball bites was like kind of the start of hey, maybe this can work. But still, right mm -hmm. now, there's 
there's nothing definitive or anything that I can say is like, you know, firmly happening. That's a shame. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. And who knows what the future will hold? Because Looney Tunes would be pretty spectacular. Um, yeah, that's such a good license. Yeah, but... I, 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 yeah, I really think that those guys are doing a good job. And I love how they're, it's funny, the limited edition, 888 units, is very similar to how we're thinking about collector's edition pinball with like these limited mm. runs. Uh, I think they're, I think they're definitely on the, the right track. Yeah. Excellent. Um, anything else that uh, we should touch upon that you want to uh, uh, tell our viewers about, or have we, have we hit the max here? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's honestly been a blur of a year since the last time I talked to you guys. So I'm, I'm it's funny. I don't even know the quantity, the actual number of new tables we launched this year. It just felt like, we're launching something every couple of weeks um, mm. or preparing to do that every couple of weeks and then delaying it internally. So it was like, we we're always in, you get into launch mode, but this entire year felt like we never could stop being in launch mode, yeah. uh, whether it was delayed or not that, but you're, you're still preparing to release it. So it's just been insane. Like ramping up to this many tables was nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, as usual, we, uh, we absolutely enjoy it because you know, Content gives us content, so. <laughs> yeah, which is useful, you know, because yeah. we like to talk about pinball and stuff, you know. <laughs> so it's good to have news. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Mel, we thank you, as always, for uh, coming on and chatting with us. Uh, we look forward to any time that we can have you on. Um, and then we look forward to speculating the hell out of what's going to happen in 2024. <laughs> mm. Yeah, guys. Like a Glad I was able to catch up, find some time here at the end of the I, it's the end of the year, right? So uh, good to talk yep. to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, Mel. Well, that about does it for us. So until next time, folks. Uh, Jared will go ahead and talk about whatever he wants to do on the next one, which is stuff and things, of course, the best. All right. Till then, bye bye, everybody. See you later.